Okay, so this is a section that I'm going to talk to you about focusing the characterization technique called the differential scanning calorimetry. And DSC, we call DSC, is one of the most commonly used uh, thermal analysis technique, whether you can measure the heat flow of, uh, through the polymer sample. And you, uh, the instrumentation will be discussed in a, a separate uh, chapters. Uh, 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 and here I just want to talk to you about the fundamental principle uh, about how you should expect it to see the uh, DSC result, what are the differences. And the fundamentals as can be found from actually what we already discussed, temperature versus volume change. So here I am going to contrast the situation that we, we discussed before. So this is a, once again, now you should be able to draw, uh, let's say I want to do this one with a TM, something with a melting transition, and I want to do something with a TG. This is as a function of temperature, this is a volume, right? And then this one goes up. This continuous jump, right, so this one is slow rise and fast rise. So that's uh, the temperature below the TM. You have uh, essentially there's a domains of polymer chains of packing looks like that, okay? And then there is a, there's a, they form this uh, crystalline domains, and then some of, some of the chains are like this, but they essentially form a little nice crystal domains, and then above there, you essentially all the crystal domains are all kinds of loosen up, so there's no regular packing in here. Okay, and the uh, uh, glassy polymers essentially you don't see any regular packing before below the TG or after the TG. It's just a change that uh, polymer chains are. This is a frozen glassy state. And this is a rubbery state. And in terms of the DSC, what this DSC measure? Is essentially heat capacity, what we known as uh, the let's say DH uh, DH DT. This is a heat capacity uh, they are measuring for the sample. And then uh, you can, you can uh, relate this with the equation that you learn. So this, therefore, the volumes and enthalpies are an interrelated term. So this one is actually proportional to for us to physically uh, picture the volume change in response to temperature change on the constant pressure. Okay, so that's the that's a term that uh, you can relate that. And so let's so all of a sudden that I am going to shift my focus to. Okay, so this is much more like a, to me the picture as a H here, right? And then uh, let's. Let's do the same thing here. So this is the same TM. And now I'm drawing here is a CP, which is a, a volume change about experimentally proportional to, to do this, OK? And so from the picture above, you can see that there is a uh, up to temperature. And then uh, to the, there is a constant slope. And then there is uh, another constant slope here. But what is distinct about here is the sharper increase. This is an essentially infinite 
like this at the melting transition. Okay. So I will put this one as mathematically this is an infinite slope. Okay. So you heat it up and then you, you will get this. Uh, whereas the one that's shown up here is For TG, it is lower and it is higher. So this is a CP value, which is related to the volume uh, metric uh, expansion, thermal expansion rate. Okay, and then in the actual experiment, what you see here. Experimental DSC, and you are looking for the signature piece, and I'm going to put this together at once. So here is a uh, once again the CP, which is related to in in uh, DSC is called the heat flow, and then you're going to say temperature. And then we know the TG is lower and the melting temperature is higher. And this is more like this continuous change. And the melting temperature, you are going to see something looks like a little peak. Okay, So this is a TM and this is a TG. And we are looking for the feature that is essentially the glass transition temperature is a discontinuity in the DSC profile, whereas you are looking for a peak, the melting transition. Okay, and then this is a, once again the signature of first order transition, and this is a second order transition of the thermodynamics. Okay, and for the DSC, I will uh, explain you to the later about. Uh, uh, the X instrument layout, it has a two compartment. One is for the reference, the other for the sample. And then this is, a, and then people usually put which side is endothermic peak. Okay, so this is the endothermic. And so the pointing upward is an endothermic peak that corresponds to the melting. Okay, and it, DS is very powerful. Not only you can capture the endothermic process, exosomic processes and the TG and the TM. Sometimes you uh, you can measure the, also the crystallization temperatures. So we're going to all talk about it in the, the section for dedicated for DSC. But here's a, uh, once again, the principle was, was given to you. Understanding the concept of the volume is similar to understanding their uh, similar similarity for the changing the enthalpy and uh, we are doing the DSC is essentially measuring the temperature derivative of the enthalpy heat capacity is what we measure and then we can essentially see that the CP the heat, uh, heat capacity as a function of temperature and then we can find the distinct features for TG for discontinuous for the peak or the melting transition, okay? So that's very important for you to develop this eyes uh, for, for the experiment data when you look at that.